Lonzo Ball's basketball career has been anything but ordinary. Everything has happened so fast, and everything has kind of blown out of proportion. Let's start at Chino Hills, where the Ball brothers gained national attention. One of Lonzo's friends said that it was crazy because we've got this tight-knit group. Sophomore and junior year, we could go anywhere, and there would be no problems. Then, once Chino Hills went 35-0, and 0, that dude couldn't go anywhere in Chino Hills without somebody asking for a picture or signing autographs. He's literally a superstar out there. The Ball Brothers put Chino Hills on the map, a relatively small town of 80,000 people in Southern California. The Ball started off as another basketball family with a dream, but did they know that what they were growing would blossom into something bigger than life? And perhaps they did. There's two sides apparently to the LeVar Ball coin. You either think he's a genius or you think he's a guy that got incredibly lucky. I guess there's a third argument for both, but whatever you believe, you can't deny the success of the Ball brothers. Three brothers who are all insanely good at the game of basketball. Ball is Life called the Ball brothers the best show in America. And you could say that they were. After all, we are talking about what was the number one team in the nation. And the team wasn't just the Ball brothers. They had some other talented players on the roster also. But that's a topic for another video. Lonzo Ball finished his career at Chino Hills with the state championship and being all USA player of the year. He would be the number four recruit in the 2016 recruiting class behind Jason Tatum at three, Josh Jackson at two, and Harry Giles at one. Unlike Tatum or Giles who signed with Duke, Zoe would go on to play his college ball at UCLA. He was ready to put the Bruins back on top and get the Pauley Pavilion jumping like it truly should be. He would do all that and more en route to a record-breaking season at UCLA. He led the nation in assist and broke the record for most assists in a season at his respective school. At this time, the hype was reaching all-time highs and spiraling somewhat out of control. People were calling Zoe a six foot six Curry and there were some people who thought he might be better than the unanimous MVP. We all know what Steph Curry can do, and we all know what he's capable of. He's one of the best shooters in NBA history, hands down. And as a matter of fact, he's one of the best point guards ever, and nobody is touching his spot in the Hall of Fame. Regardless of what somebody like Michael Jordan might say, or might believe. Despite the comparisons, Zoe did showcase the ability to hit from anywhere in college and he was a point guard with a natural feel for the game that truly made everybody around him a better player. Zoe's unselfishness and play style was honestly refreshing. In an era that has become dominated by score first point guards, the way Lonzo could dominate the game without scoring the basketball had become unique. NBA Draft.net compared Zoe to Jason Kidd and Ricky Rubio. They said Ball has a unique set of physical tools for a point guard that will provide him with a number of advantages in the pros. One of the first things that stands out about Ball is his elite transition play. It starts with his ability to force turnovers and haul in defensive boards to push the ball up the floor and begin the break. He has tremendous speed in the open floor when the ball is in his hands, but the skill that truly transcends him above all other players at his age is his elite vision, his creativity, and his passing ability. Magic Johnson and the Los Angeles Lakers took note of this. June 22nd, 2017, everything would change. The Los Angeles Lakers would select Lonzo Ball with the number two overall pick in the 2017 NBA Draft. And just like that, the clock was ticking. See, because from the moment you're drafted in the NBA, nobody no longer cares what you could do in college, what you did in college, how you were the man, or any of that. Everything changes, and it's a whole new league that you have to prove yourself in. And for the most part, what you did is now irrelevant. This video, we're going to talk about the insane hype that Lonzo Ball has gotten and how he can save his NBA career that has somewhat been spiraling in New Orleans. But before we go any further guys, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. You will not want to miss another Decoop video. And that's facts. I'm trying to get to 200,000 subscribers to go full time guys. So be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Leave your suggestions on videos you guys want to see down in the comments below. I've been seeing some requests for me to do nightly overviews of games that happened that day. And I might start doing that. But I think in order to start doing those, I at least want to get to 100,000 subscribers first. Also guys, be sure to follow my IG handle, G like Coop. You will not want to miss another post. IRL basketball is coming soon. The hype placed on Lonzo Ball was unprecedented. When he came into the NBA, LeVar Ball had everybody putting a target on Lonzo Ball's back. 
despite Lonzo being one of the more chill and laid back players in the NBA. He seems like a really easygoing guy and somebody that's not a problem at all to be around. The hype wasn't only placed on Lonzo by LeVar though. Magic Johnson said we expect to see a ball jersey hanging up in the rafters one day. When asked why the expectations were so high, Magic said he has greatness written all over him. I think the first time people really noticed that Lonzo Ball could struggle in the NBA is when he had the somewhat questionable start to the NBA Summer League. But once he got going, everybody again became a fan and the love affair was nuts. Despite early poor shooting efforts, he finished as a summer league MVP, but not before putting on a show. Zoe's rookie year, he would finish with 10 points, seven assists and seven rebounds, which aren't bad numbers until you bring in his shooting percentage. He shot 36% from the field and 31% from three. His rookie year, he showed good potential, but he looked to build on that. His second year, he would play alongside all NBA LeBron James, one of the best players of all time. When we talk about expectations being high, now they were as high as ever. And the spotlight that was already placed on Lonzo Ball in the mega market that's Los Angeles grew five times bigger. Again, Lonzo showed promise, but the poor shooting struggles were a little too much to ignore. He averaged 10 points, five assists and five rebounds while shooting 41% from the field and 33% from the three point line and only shooting 42% from the free throw line, which was a career low. Despite the Lakers being good for a large part of the season, I felt that LeBron James being so good helped to halt some of Lonzo Ball's development. But I'm sure playing with a player like LeBron James taught Lonzo things that he wouldn't have learned any other way. But of course, I felt like Lonzo needed to be free. I felt like he needed to be in a situation that the pressure wouldn't be so high, that he could play the style that he wanted and not have all of these eyes on him. I think a lot of Lonzo's early career struggles can be attributed to confidence. I think that he's a guy that reminds me somewhat of myself. Lonzo Ball was this elite shooter in college, at least from the three point line. And he also shot respectable from the free throw line at 67%, which is pretty solid for a college athlete. Now my question is, how can somebody that's so good at shooting in college, somebody that's unconscious, have this effect on them to where they can struggle in the NBA? I think it goes directly with the confidence thing. Everybody starts talking about his form and how it's not fundamentally proper. Well, yes, he does have some issues and those issues do need to get worked out. But if he's knocking them down, isn't everything good? I thought the trade to the New Orleans Pelicans would be good for Lonzo. He gets a smaller market with less eyes. He goes to a team that he can kind of become one of the focal points. And also he gets a coach that believes in him and he plays in a fast paced system, one of the fastest in the league, which is the New Orleans Pelicans. Everything seems so ideal for Lonzo. And maybe most importantly of all, there would be no pressure. The Pelicans have been bad this season. And as a matter of fact, they've been really bad, but they're worse when Lonzo plays. The Pelicans are four and four without Lonzo and they're two and 14 when he plays. Alvin Gentry's rotations with Lonzo have been questionable to say the best. And perhaps Alvin Gentry may just not know how to use Lonzo, but Alvin Gentry has coached some great point guards. As a matter of fact, he's had multiple point guards have career years under him. And one of those being the recent Alfred Payton. One of Lonzo's calling cards with the Los Angeles Lakers was his defense. He's been a poor defender with New Orleans, constantly gambling and consistently out of position. And the advanced stats show it. The Pelicans as a whole are a horrific defensive team. And I'm not sure it's all on him. I think he's learning poor habits from a bad team. The Pelicans also average less points. They're less efficient and they have a higher turnover percentage when Lonzo Ball is on the court. If you wonder how this happens, you have to watch how the Pelicans play. With Brandon Ingram and Drew Holiday being ball dominant players, Lonzo really doesn't have room for a whole lot of touches. In the preseason, the Pelicans were 5-0 and and they were playing their best basketball. They were a team that was moving the ball consistently and effectively. And Lonzo Ball was playing phenomenal basketball alongside Zion Williamson. Zion Williamson is the perfect type of player for Lonzo. He sorely needs Zion to return. It seems like the Pelicans have been teaching Lonzo to do everything in extremes. Lonzo is currently shooting 38% on catch and shoot threes this season, which is pretty good, but he's only shooting 34% from the three point line in total, which is below league average. So where he's really struggling is the pull up jumpers. He's taking seven threes a game, which is a lot. He's taking the scoring thing to an extreme and every time he catches the ball, it's like he wants to shoot a three just to prove he can do it. He only averages five drives per game, which is terribly low. 
And the Pelicans definitely want to get that up because he's at his best when he's creating. As a matter of fact, in one of Lonzo's recent games, he looked amazing when he was getting to the basket and creating for others. But at one point this season, the attacks became too predictable and he would try to attack every time he touched the ball. Again, Lonzo does some things in extremes and I think the coaching staff definitely needs to get some hands on this. Despite the improvement from three from Lonzo Ball and shooting free throw wise, he's still struggling in the mid range area which teams are inviting him to take. He's only shooting 20%, which is pretty bad. If Lonzo is able to eliminate these bad mid range jumpers or make them efficiently, we could start to see a different Lonzo Ball. I think the benching in New Orleans was somewhat of a good thing, but I'm not sure Gentry did it for the right reason. Lonzo needs to run with the second unit so he can get his feet. He needs to be able to play his style of basketball. He needs to be able to rebound the ball effectively, which he said that's when he feels the most engaged in the game. But schematically, maybe the Pelicans don't allow for him to crash the glass like he may like. Coaching in the NBA is so vital, and I can't stress it enough that coaches need to put players in positions to be successful. Maybe the Pelicans don't need to turn Lonzo into a big time scorer. Maybe him being a Ricky Rubio, more Chris Paul type of player would be better for his career and for who he is as a player. The Pelicans are bad and they're going to be bad a majority of the season. They need to embrace the youth movement and let these players play and figure themselves out. I think Lonzo has a very bright career in the NBA ahead of him, but I think him figuring out his true role will be everything. I want to see the Pelicans allow him to run the offense more. At the end of the day, it's possible that Lonzo's early career health has taken a toll on him, but I still think he's going to be fine in the grand scheme of things. He's the ultimate worker and with the right trainer, we could be looking at a completely different Zo a few years from now. Chances are, Zo is already working on everything that we've mentioned in this video to truly save his NBA career. And any improvement is good improvement in the NBA. Zo's improvement on his shot form and his improvement in tacking the basket as of late show good signs and promise. Hopefully he finds a coach that knows how to use him. Be sure to click the video on the screen right now. It's me going over Carmelo Anthony versus LeBron James and Anthony Davis. I'm Dekoop. Be sure to subscribe. Notice on. And I'm out.